In class, we just went through an example of how to tell from a table of values if a relationship between two variables is quadratic. If you have a look at the table here that's off to the right, it's the same one that's in your handout. We could go ahead and calculate the differences, the first and second differences in mass to see if the second differences are somewhat constant. If they were, then that would suggest that there's a quadratic relationship between the mass, in this case of a puppy, versus its age and days. But the goal of what we're about to do now is to use Fathom to graph the data. Sometimes when we're working with data, it's not as clean as you would see in some of our examples. So more real life data tends to be a, a bit messy and it's difficult at times to spot patterns in tables of values. So we'll let Fathom and its graphing abilities tell us whether or not that a quadratic best fits the data that's given. So let's have a quick look at the problem. So we are given them, or the problem is with regards to the mass in kilograms of a puppy versus its age in days. And it's shown in the table that's to the right. Your task is to make a graph of mass versus age. And also to hypothesize the type of curve that might fit these data. Lastly, we're going to use sliders to fit the curve. Well, we're going to ignore parts D and E and simply focus on A through C. So by watching this video and pausing it intermittently, you'll have a chance to try to reproduce this solution and practice your Fathom skills by graphing quadratics. You can also refer to the solution that's provided here in the notes as well to help you out. So let's get started in Fathom. What you can do to speed things up is to go to the course website and to go to Unit 3. And if you scroll to the bottom of the page, what you will notice eventually, it's not there now, is in the attachments, there will be a Fathom file that you can use for creating your own quadratic graph. So here we have something already set up for us. The data has been input to the table. We have graphing space ready for us. So we can go ahead and drop the attributes wherever to go. So the age and days is the X or independent variable which will have an effect, we believe or hope, <laughs> on the mass of the puppy. Now, just by eyeballing the data, you can see that there is a fairly nice curve that's there. We can go ahead just for kicks and add a line of best fit. And when you do that, notice that R squared is rather high. There is a strong linear correlation between age and mass, but Given the curve that we can see here, that nonlinear nature of the data, it's not always best to use a line even when the correlation coefficients are as high as they are. So let's remove that. What we're going to do now is we're going to create an equation. And in that equation, we'll select specific numbers that will allow the curve to fit as best as we can get it to those points. So over here to the right in this text box, you have the general equation for all quadratics. It's y equals a times x to the power of 2 plus b times x plus c. So what we need to do is to figure out the a, the b, and the c in order to graph the equation. Note that y is the mass, x is the age, and conveniently, the c 
is the y-intercept of the graph. If we look to the data table, you can see here that at age zero, the y-intercept is 3.25 kilograms. So we already have a value that we can substitute in for the C. So to get the A, B, and C, we need to introduce what we call sliders. And a slider simply means that you can introduce as many variables as needed for your equation, and you can dynamically manipulate them. That is, change their values to explore what works best. So we're going to use A, B, and C, just as we have it here in this equation. And we're going to start to vary the values. Now notice I can slide them up and down, change those values, but nothing occurs to the graph because we don't have an equation plotted. So next step is to right-click on the graph, head on down to plot function, which means to plot an equation. And what we're going to do is we're going to enter the following. So following the model we have here, it's A multiplied by H in days. That's the X value. So under attribute, we can double click age in days. We can raise that to the exponent 2, because quadratics have a highest power of 2 on the x. We're going to cursor over or cursor out to put the addition in, and then b times age and days again, and then plus c. Notice that the a, b, and c, those variables appear in pink or blue, depending on the version of Fathom you're using. And then the independent variable is also color-coded and is case-sensitive. So be careful if you're typing them in because of the case sensitivity. So once we hit apply, and we'll OK to exit that box, you're going to notice this red quadratic that's been plotted. We can see that its vertex, or its turning point, seems to be hovering over the y-intercept. And what we can do is we can choose to drop that a little bit more. We can see that the vertex seems to be dipping below what we would like it to be. So I believe in the table it was 3.25. We'll leave it here for now at 3.20. Notice how thin or stretched out that parabola happens to be. If we play around with these values here, we can see that the B value almost wants to make the parabola move, much like it's a string or a chain that seems to be hooked around a peg. The A value, we can choose to change it. And as we increase it, you can see that it's, it's stretching that parabola or the string out a little bit more. And as we decrease it, it starts to thin. So we need to apply a strategy where we can thin out, or sorry, stretch out that parabola to flatten it and maybe alter or vary the B value so that we get the right shift or movement of the graph so that it will eventually fall into place over these points. So what you can see so far is that I'm using a value of 1 here. We're going to have to go even smaller than that to stretch the graph. So let's bring that down closer to zero. So you can see it's stretching out. I can head towards zero, and as I go to zero, the line goes straight. Sorry, the curve goes straight, and then it goes upside down once we hit the negatives. So we'd like the graph to point upwards. So let's bring it back up to the positive side. And there you can see it bending back up again. So let's leave it at 0.07 for now. Let's see if by altering the B value, we can affect any change here. 
Here we're using a negative B value. It seems to be dropping it all too much. Let's bring that back up again. Let's go into the positives. Let's leave it here for now. Let's go back to the A value again. Now it's going to get increasingly more difficult to get the precision we need. Now that's pretty good. So it says zero, but we'd like to carry more decimal places so we can actually record an equation. So let's go ahead and do that. What we'll do is we're just going to double click on the slider boxes. We won't worry about the last one. And it's going to bring in this information. What we can do is we can choose to change the range for the slider. Let's go with a minimum of zero because we don't want to go below it. And we're going to want two decimal places of zeros. And then we want to carry even more. Let's go with 0 0.00, let's say 2. And you can see how it rescales the axis right away. So let's bring that up into a range that we're more comfortable with. Okay, we're getting closer and closer and closer. Not quite there yet. So let's move this up a little bit higher. Getting closer. Fairly good, 0.17. Here's 0.18. Let's see what that looks like. 0.181, not bad. It would be nice if we could drop that curve a bit. Perhaps if we shift it to the right a bit, we'll be more successful. So let's minimize that to zero. And let's go, you can see 0.1. Let's maybe go 0.05. That's not helping too much. Let's pull that back a bit. It's moving slowly. Let's up it a bit more. 0 0.06, 0 0.0. Take it a bit more. That's probably about right. Again, we want the curve to go through as many points as possible and have a nice distribution or an even distribution of points above and below the curve. We could probably even push that just a tiny bit further. But then again, we don't want to pull it closer to this point as we'll lose the number of points through which the curve is going through. So in the end, what we have is this equation here using these parameters. So we could very well go and check our work by plotting another function that has these numbers in it as it's a, b, and c. So let's do that. So we're going to plot a times, sorry, not a times, but let's take the a value point, 0, 0. 181 times, we're going to go age uh, days, and that's to the power of 2, and then a cursor over, that is the cursor out, plus the B, which is point oh eight four eight, and that's times age and days as well, and then plus the C value, which we have is 3.2. Two right here. So 3.2. Let's apply it. Okay. And you can see that we have nearly a direct overlay of this new blue curve over the red one. And that's using an accuracy of here we can see five decimal places. Here we have four. We could even extend the number of decimal places by changing the range that is here. But we've got an excellent fit. In closing, what you can do with Fathom with your own data, if you suspect that it's going to be a curve, that it's not a line, 
and you'd like to fit a quadratic to it, this is the perfect example for doing so. The last step, and it's not specified in this problem, but what we could do is we could then ask extending questions. For instance, if we look to the data here, let's say that we wanted to introduce a case between 5 and 6. So I'm going to put in a new case. I'm going to call it, I'm going to create one case. And let's go down to the bottom here. Let's say I want to go 45. 45 is in between 40 and 50. The mass won't necessarily be right in between 9 and 11.5 because we're not dealing with a line of best fit. Okay, so we could estimate using an average in between, but we would be off. So for 45, what we'd like to do is to use the equation or the graph to come up with the value. So if we go to the graph and we plot a value, let's plot 45. And let's see if that gives us an x value. It does. So from this line, if we trace up and we move over, we're going to look to approximate nearly 10, roughly 10 kilograms. But if we want to be specific or precise, we could pull up our calculator. And using the numbers that are there, from our equation, let me do this here, I'll align it here, let's use the equation blue, we could take 0 0.00181, multiply that by, we want to take the age and days, 45, we want to square that, we'll press enter. So that's this chunk calculated. Then we'll add on 0 0.0848 times same age of 45 days, enter. So here we are at 41. And let's see if I hit enter once more. Looks like I have a calculation error. So let's go back for a second. Let's retry that. So let's try point, point zero zero one eight one times 45 gives me this. Although I was to square the 45, so I better times that again by 45, and we've got this. To that, let's add on, let's use brackets this time. Open a bracket, and 0 0.0848 times 45. Close the bracket. Let's see what we get now. 7.4, and then we'll add the 3.2. So we get 10.68 kilograms which was a close estimate for the graph, but more accurate in using the equation. Let's plot that point by finishing it off here. Let's add 10.68 to our table. And we'll see that value appear on the graph. And notice that it is just slightly above the line. Had it carried perhaps more decimal places, in our model, we would see that it would perhaps align more with some of the other points.